Doesn't it feel like 2000? Does it feel like 07? Are you feeling it? I mean, the vibes, the excitement, the hype, the euphoria of markets. In this video, I'm gonna talk about what a bubble is, the five stages of a bubble, and where do we stand in comparison to past bubbles. So what is a bubble? A bubble is when valuations on an asset or a company or a sector get overvalued. And the intrinsic value is not equal to what the asset is actually trading at. So like for instance, in the housing market, when housing prices went through the roof and mortgage rates dropped two and a half percent in three years, and all of a sudden homes that would have sold for two or three hundred thousand dollars were now selling for six, seven, even a million dollars. Ballooning of assets. You see it in the stock market, you see it in the housing market, you see it in the commodities market, you see it in every market. At some point in history, we have seen a ballooning of asset prices in all different types of markets. Between 1989 and 1992 in Japan, housing prices went through the roof. I mean, through the roof. To the point that in Japan, pieces of land were going for $139,000 per square foot at the peak. When the housing market in Japan eventually blew up in 1992, we saw a creation of the lost decades, 30 years of housing prices and economic downturn, a situation which is just really coming back to life. Now, for some of you, you were around during 1995 to 2000 when we saw the escalation and growing of the dot-com boom, when technology became a bigger and bigger part of the market and became story in Cinderella stocks like Amazon or Pets.com or WebMD. Valuations that just were through the roof. It didn't matter what they were, you know, the fundamentals tip back then. It's the new way of doing things. And then 2000 rolled around and the market crashed. And stocks that were high flyers, are now no longer in existence. They're out of business. Along came the housing bubble. When we saw mortgage, 30 year mortgage rates drop by two and a half percent to their all time lows of five and a quarter percent. Now I know today you can get a mortgage for less than 3% on a 30 year mortgage. But back then that big drop, that cheapening of money and the loosening of uh, guidelines on who you could lend to and what kind of credit you had to have, well, that created this euphoria and bubble-like environment. Eventually, that blew up. It was in 2008 when Lehman Brothers filed bankruptcy, AIG, Fannie Mae, and Freddie Mac all collapsed and needed to be bailed out by the government. This is when all of a sudden those mortgage backed securities that people were buying that were triple A or double A rated were all of a sudden discovered that the majority of the mortgages within those bonds were actually junk. They were 90 day default rates skyrocketing because people had over borrowed and couldn't keep up with the payments and they were using nifty products like three year arms and five year arms. And when they had to go back and refinance them, they didn't qualify to refinance. And so they had to start paying those higher mortgage rates, which eventually led to them defaulting and getting behind on payments and foreclosure rates started going up. It wasn't until 2008 that that bubble really bursted because a lot of different companies like Lehman Brothers, Bear Stearns, who had made crazy bets within their hedge fund world, uh, that eventually those bonds collapsed. The common thing was housing has never gone down in price. It's always gone up. It'll always continue. Euphoria. Everybody's in it. The five stages of a bubble start with displacement. This is where a new paradigm comes into play. For instance, the tech bubble. When we saw the excitement 
over technology and everybody having to upgrade because of the year 2000 and the code change within software. We saw a boom in all different types of companies, mostly internet-based companies, but technology led it. And then 2008, the housing boom, cheap money, easy to get a loan, didn't have to put anything down. Heck, you didn't even have to have a job. You could borrow as much as you wanted. And that grew and every the euphoria, the excitement started to build. And then stage two, the boom. This is when momentum starts to pick up. The media grabs onto it and starts pushing it higher and higher. It's on the front page of every newspaper. It's on the top of every uh, internet feed that you, uh, news feed you, that you have. It's that growing, that excitement of FOMO, fear of missing out. Oh, I got to get a mortgage. Oh, I got to buy that stock. Oh my gosh, I'm going to borrow money to buy those assets. Margin expands. The more margin is taken out, the more people leverage up. We saw that in 2000 during the dot-com era. We saw that during the housing era. And guess what? We're seeing it now. I remember the joke was taxi drivers giving stock tips during the dot-com boom or strippers who had multiple houses during the housing boom. Today, it's my daughter's boyfriend who trades stocks on Robinhood or my neighbor's friend's kids who are Robin Hoodies and they're trading and making money on stocks. And then there's stage three, euphoria. That atmosphere of this can't go wrong. It's a new movement. Everything's changing. Don't you see it now? I mean, people around you in the news, uh, companies like GameStop and people driving that stock price up, they're doing the short squeeze. It's euphoric. It's never going to stop. It's a whole new movement. Euphoria is, well, it's dreamy. It's like the perfect situation when people who have shouldn't be accomplishing certain things are, and it's against the norm. Euphoria is, well, a dangerous place. Then there's profit taking. This is stage four. This is where the smart money starts to sell their positions. They've made a ton of profit. They realize the euphoric state that the world is in at this point. I mean, look at the news, look at the hype. I mean, today, look at where the news headlines today on the Wall Street Journal or any other news feed that you look at on the internet. It's about GameStop or the Reddit guys taking over the internet, the Wall Street bet. I mean, it's just a euphoric stage. And this is where the hedge funds and smart money and the pension funds start to take profits behind the scenes, unbeknownst to the re average retail investor. It's the euphoric stage or profit taking of all of that hype during that euphoria. And that smart money is now going, it's time to get out. Stage five, the panic. It doesn't take much. Maybe a news headline or unfortunately 9-11 was a big trigger. Uh, the housing market was a hedge fund at Bear Stearns during early 2007 started to collapse because they held mortgage-backed securities and their funds started to crumble. And everybody started asking, why? What's wrong? And eventually it just gained momentum and we saw a breakdown in housing. We started to see a fracturing in the housing market. And then we got to October of 20, 2008 and Lehman Brothers, AIG, uh, Fannie Mac, Freddie Mac all collapsed. Lehman Brothers filed bankruptcy. This was like the, one of the largest investment banks in the entire world. It had 100 year history, gone, all of a sudden gone. And that created a cascade of selling in October of 08. Upwards of 17% was lost in that month. Upwards of $9.2 trillion evaporated, gone. Just a little thing triggered it. It was just one little prick of the balloon. 2021, January, end of the month. Holy cow, where are we at today? Well, let's flash back a year from now. In the last prior 10 years, we have escalated the amount of borrowed money through quantitative easing. We've seen 
the growth of the wealth divide. Wealthier people are getting wealthier all time. Um, uh, highs when it came to wealth. Jeff Bezos, richest man in the world, what, 160 some odd billion dollars. What do you do with that kind of wealth? Other than try to give it away, spend it on things, what have you. You got more money than, than anything. And then COVID hits and we have a pandemic, a liquidity crisis, the market crashes, Fed steps in. You know, bravo to Federal Chairman Powell for stepping in and basically standing off a complete collapse of our economy. And they pumped in money and all of a sudden we started getting money. If you lost your job, you ended up getting a check. And the world of commission-free uh, trading was came through Ro uh, Rob Robinhood, excuse me, through Robinhood. And all of a sudden you saw home day traders, just like in 98, just like in 99. And all of a sudden the stock market started hitting all time highs, all time highs during one of the worst financial states of our country, of our world. And markets went higher. Margin rates, margin levels have are at all time highs now, all time highs, all of a sudden, Groups of people gather together and they start looking for weak positions, the short interest on stocks. And they start going after these uh, institutions that short stocks, the, the Robin Hoodie group against Wall Street. And all of a sudden you see companies like GameStop, companies on the verge of bankruptcy. And a handful of people see some value there. If they can switch around, they get some injection of money from Ryan Cohen, from the ex-CEO of Chewy's. And all of a sudden the stock starts popping. And this massive grouping of people, retail investors drive the stock up and they just putting it hard to the institutional short sellers. They're killing these funds. And all of a sudden things start to get loud in the media. It's all over the media. They can't be doing this. They can't be doing that, but they can be doing this and they can do that. I mean, come on. We're at again in an environment where we're euphoric. We don't see this coming down. And honestly, it may continue to go up for a while longer. And the reason is, is liquidity. As long as liquidity is there, as long as we don't see an interruption in the liquidity, the flow of money, this can go higher and possibly will. With the new stimulus package that the Biden administration is proposing, the $1,400 checks that people will get, I mean, most people will save that money or put it into investments because remember, oh yeah, you can't go down. It's great. The world of Fed will save us. But at some point, some point, the weight, the gravity of the earth will pull on the markets. And that's when panic hits and that's when cascade selling happens. And that's when we go into a recession. Unfortunately, when you go look at a chart of the S and P, we're at all time highs. You look at where we were in 09 to where we are today. Holy cow. If you look at how much leverage is involved in that, how much margin is involved in that, how much money we have borrowed to get to that point, it's parallel to the height of where the market goes. And when that liquidity dries up and the balloon busts.